More is more, and Over the Top is a style all its own, today on Beats, Bobbles, and Jewels. Beats, Bobbles, and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beating Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events, and online learning. BeatingDaily.com Beatalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beatalon.com Create your style with Swarovski Elements. EKSuccessBrands.com forward slash create your style with Swarovski elements. Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com. Jewel School, a division of jewelry television. JTV.com slash Jewel School. TierraCast, define your design with metal. TierraCast.com. Create drama in your jewelry by layering elements together. Hi, I'm Katie Hacker, your host, and part of being a designer is deciding when to add, when to subtract, and which elements need to be highlighted. On today's show, we're looking at layering different elements to provide that over-the-top look. So let's start out by looking at some necklaces and ways to change them up. This black necklace is a perfect example of easy to change and make a statement. If you use a big clasp like this, you can wear it in the back, you can wear it on the side like this, or you can turn it to the front and make a focal piece on your design. Now, this necklace is also easy to change, and I like to do this particularly with multiple strand designs. So this one is pearls and some faceted beads. You can dress it up by adding a brooch. Now, the brooch is going to be so much heavier than the rest of the necklace that you probably want to pin that to your shirt or sweater. And then, if you want to keep it more casual, you could use a little denim flower, so easy to change with a brooch. Those make some fun pendants too. Now I love to wear chunky necklaces and this is an easy one that's just strung nuggets together with the cracked quartz and if you put the same toggle clasp on a piece of chain then you can wear this with a variety of necklines. So you just have your basic toggle at the end and then you fasten the opposite end of the chain through. And to connect this toggle to a piece of chain, you can just open the chain link if it's unsoldered, or you can use a jump ring. So that's a quick tip for changing up the length. And then this one is that you can actually change the look of the materials themselves. So I put some charm beads on to wire mesh, and this ruffles. So if you want to have a little more feminine, romantic effect, then you can pull the pieces apart between the beads. And it also has the effect of shortening the overall length of the necklace. And next time you want to wear it with a longer neckline, you just pull it out straight. Now, all of these instructions are found on this book and also on our website. Coming up, Dale Nicholson layers brass and resin flowers with crystals. Why use them plain when added drama is just a crystal away? Then, Mary Hetmansberger uses copper clay with pewter findings to create unique window focal points. And finally, Juliana Hudgens shows us how to mix wire with die cut shapes for a lush, layered look. So let's meet Dale. I'm here with designer Dale Nicholson. And Dale, this is a gorgeous necklace you're wearing. Thank you. You're welcome. We're talking all about more is more today. Oh, this is more is more. This is right up your alley. <laughs> I love to combine different materials and different textures and come up with something that really speaks to my personality. Oh, yeah, and these flowers and leaves are beautiful. Yeah, these flowers, are they're basically just acrylic shapes, and I don't know, this just the variety really inspires me. Oh, yeah, and mixing the materials, too, mm -hmm. the metal, the acrylic, resin, yep. and crystal. Right, and the, the layered uh, layering with the um, filigree just adds a different texture. It really, really speaks... 
um, to a different element. So it's fun for crafting and yeah. designing. Well, I bet you have a secret tip for how to fit these together. I do. Well, first I'm going to show you, like, this is basically how the finished piece would look. And you can see that a crystal is kind of at the, at the forefront of it all. So in this area, you see that there's the crystal. This is a bead cap that's I've flared a little bit just to give it a little dimension. And then I'm layering it with um, a small one over a large one and then matching it up with that filigree bead cap. So what really pulls it all together is that, that crystal. So if you come over here, you see I've just taken the 28 gauge wire and I've threaded the crystal on. And once I get it into the middle, I just do a simple little twist just once or twice just to catch it there. Okay. And so when you see that there, I'm just pulling it right up. And I snug it a little bit. And then I do, again, the same thing, just the tiniest little twist. I just twist it once, twice, and then this is the secret. You bring this piece back up to the front of your piece. Same with the other side. You want to bring it up to the front. Now, you're wondering why. Well, I don't want to have rough pieces on the back side of the piece that I'm Makes wearing. Makes sense. Okay? So, uh, now that I've got them up there, I wrap one around this way and then the opposite direction that way. And I do something that I probably don't need to do because wire is very stable, but I do a knot. And I do a, a knot that then just secures that wire in oh, place. Okay. okay. And then I know the back side is clean and the front side I can just go in with my cutters and clip off those raw ends. And I know they're never going to affect me in the wearing or anybody wearing this piece when it's done up. Perfect. So, and then the other thing too, uh, on this bigger piece, I wanted to show you that I've got this broken apart, but you see these two pieces here, well, I wanted to see the different color, so I put a little bit of adhesive in there to keep them together, and then I don't have to worry about them spinning once I put them all together. So again, I did a small little four that millimeter so cute. I love yeah, that in into that little tulip, and again, I do the same technique. Then I've got this little um, baby. It's a, a pretty little cup, and then I'm using the crystal in there, and I'm adding on a leaf to the back. So basically, just when I'm doing my tying, I just thread on a leaf, oh, okay. twist it again, and I would do the same technique. Although, even though I don't have a filigree here, I'm just going to bring it up on both sides. And then I'm going to twist it again inside there. And you would think, oh, it's going to show. You know, it's going to show. Well, you know what? It doesn't. Once I pull it around a few times, look, it just disappears right into that. And I do the same thing. I'm going to tie up that little knot. I, I do it because I want to make sure that my piece never falls apart when I'm wearing it or if I give it as a gift. Right, that's great. Okay. Now, if you wanted to use that for an earring, would you just wire wrap it onto a base or maybe make a wire wrap um, loop at the top? I could. Uh, on the necklace that I've made, I did, um, I think on this one I can show you, yeah, I basically, I wired wrapped over and then I could keep spinning this and then just go in with um, a uh, Round, nose, round nose plier and make a little loop. Right. So, and I think that's what I did on the necklace over there. Okay, I think let's I take did a look. pull that. So yeah. Here. And there, there's a little wire hoop there. And I also added on some little leaves, if you see, um, on the opposite side there. Here so, and, and yep, at the edge and on the, the jump edge. rings. Yeah. That looks great. I think I want to take a look at these earrings, too, because you have a, something special going on right here with the bead cap. Yeah. I Rather than using the bead cap over a bead, I faced it up so it kind of dramatizes that uh, so crystal at the top. So this piece right here is the bead mm -hmm. cap, and then here's your cone covering yeah, the top of the flower. Yeah. So pretty. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And so you just keep adding these elements together and more is more. More is more. We'll be right back with another great project. I'm here with designer and author Mary Hetmansberger. Welcome, Mary. Hi. Today we're talking about more is more. And your style is very artistic, very layered, and you always bring good ideas for using components in different ways. I love this necklace project. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I like the idea of the layering, and I love the idea of having a focal point that is a little bit more. Right, and you just keep building and building and building. Where do we start? Well, first you have to decide what your focal point is going to be. And I've chosen just for this project, I've chosen art clay, which is really great fun. It's a copper clay, and what I love about it is you can torch fire it. So you basically pull just a little bit off, 
And you want to keep it under, under wraps because it tends to get a little bit dried out if it gets in the air too long. You basically just make a ball. And I'm just using stainless steel screen. You can use copper or brass, but what I found, especially with the torch firing, is the stainless tends to hold up a little bit better. Okay. And basically, I am just pushing this through. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's so much fun. And you can really extrude it. The one rule here is that you have to have enough clay in the back to hold on the little extruded part. So you don't want to push it too far out or you're just going to end up with spaghetti, okay. copper spaghetti. Would you say like a penny's thickness? Mm, probably about less. that. Yeah, okay. no, probably about that. That's about right. Okay. So you, you put it like through there and you don't want to, you want to kind of gauge what you're going to be, you know, going around. Um, so that's kind of important. But the other thing is you need to let it dry. And then the way that I fire these, I actually put them on a, a tripod with a screen and I just take a propane torch and come up, come up from, you know, like below it, start to heat it. And then once I see it starting to get glowing, then I'll kind of move my torch up and move it down and keep it kind of at a really nice glowing state for about, oh, I don't know, about two, three minutes. Okay. So basically the way that I start to make that, and I don't know if you notice this, but it's got a really nice edge around it too. And since it's more is more, you want that sort of, you know, I guess, focal point to look like it's really oh, yeah. prestigious. So what I do on this is I first heat my copper with, again, my propane torch, and I'm gonna make my copper nice and annealed. And what I wanna do is I wanna first poke my hole. So to punch out my hole, I'm gonna use a uh, disc cutter here, and basically I slide it in. Okay, and, and it has some great colors from your torch too. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And we come in like this. I'm gonna use the um, disc cutter and basically I just let it slide in. If you kind of force it, you, you run the risk of really ruining it. Um, I always use a softer hammer rather than just a, a regular uh, steel hammer because it, it'll distribute the weight a little bit better. So you wanna come in and hammer. And I always let it just fall through. Then you know you have a nice clean cut. Too. You have a nice clean cut and you don't jam your, your cutter. And then I pull this out. So I can slide this out of here. And then we've got the piece here. Okay, and that's going to become your window. This is going to become my window, but as you notice, it's still very flat. So to create just a little bit more dimension, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my dapping block here, my dapping tool, and I basically come in like this. And just remember that this copper needs to be really annealed. So this is the point where you, you know, you want to take it right from the flame and, you know, quench it and then bring it right over and start working because you don't want to do any hammering or texturing at this point yet. So I'm going to come in and you know what I'm going to do first? Oh yeah, much better side on the other side. So I'm going to come in like this. Did you choose it for color? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'm going to come in like this and I'm basically creating a little bit of a ridge. I'm kind of pu pushing it down and then I gently come in sort of flatten it out. And then I kind of look to see how I'm doing. I'm doing really good. So I just keep going a little bit. And then once I get it kind of, you know, bulged out, then I want to come in and just gently hammer it down. And then at this point is when I actually use my scissors and I, I'm really not crazy about real sharp edges. And so what I do is I actually come in and I, I always tell everybody to keep their scissors at the 12 o'clock position and then basically move the metal. Okay. And it makes a much nicer edge. Now also, at the same time then, I've got this little piece started, you can come in with steel wool and clean up your edges if you want and really make it nice and smooth. But now you've got basically this sort of look here. I'm going to set this one aside. Yeah, so you've created your frame. You've created the frame. And then on the silver, this is a 24 gauge silver, just like the copper. And what I do with it is I just hammered it. So I just made it look a little because bit more interesting. Because it needs more, more, more texture. It needs more, more, more texture. Right. And it makes it look a bit more interesting. And it also softens those edges when we sort of deckle the edges. Okay, and that piece is actually going behind yes. the frame. Yes, so I'm, I'm going to do this like this. And then this goes here. And then what's fabulous is these wonderful components that really set off oh, yeah. a window. And so whenever I'm thinking about designing, you want to start from the top layer and work down. So thinking about that, these two are going to be the first connection. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to poke a hole and I'm going to have you insert a little 
brad in these. Okay. It's a brad is a great great um, addition to cold connections because it's so easy, and you basically I have these holes punched already, but I, and I just did them with the hole punch, and they're going to be like a pattern for the copper. So I'm working that through, and you want to make sure that it's got a nice clean cut on the back. And then I'm and you'll just have, do one at a time, right? We'll just do one at a time. Okay, so well, let me put on my optics so I can see a little better <laughs> here. All righty. Okay, and since then those I brads hand, are tiny. Yes, they are very tiny. And I will hand you a brad here. Here you go. Okay, so keep everything, whoops, I'm sorry. Now what you have to up. do is you need to insert it in the hole all the way through. And then, and this is where you really need to see, is you've got to open up the two prongs. There you go. Okay, and you can combine the different metallic totally. colors too. That totally. looks great. Yeah. Now, and then this will be hidden by the piece. Right, and that's the most okay. important thing too with the brads that's is great. you want to make sure that you you only use them where you're going to be able to sandwich them in between pieces. Right. And what I always do with the brads is I come in and I hammer a little bit on the top, just start flatten it out. But I also hammer on the back just gently, just to make sure it's nice and secure. Okay. Okay. And. You know, I could put the other ones in, but I want to get to the eyelet, so I'm going to go ahead and, okay, yeah. and speed through that to show sure. you how this. So I would actually put my three holes in, and I do them one at a time because you don't you won't want to take a chance of it not being aligned when you get to that third hole. I'm going to come in like this and come into the back here, okay? And this is how I'm going to sandwich this all together. So now the second set has to be done with an eyelet, so. So you punch the top layer first. Punch the top, and I punch all of the holes in the top first. Because what you want to have, you want to make sure that you get those all in before you start the process of connecting. Okay. And eyelets are, eyelets and brads both kind of take the place of riveting in a way, or, or well, they add to Well, an eyelet is, is really more like a tube rivet. It's just the great thing about an eyelet, Green it's light. already started the process. So it's kind of nice because you've got, you've got the um, opportunity to come in. That looks great with the ring on top too. Oh, I love the ring on the top. And now you want to, again, set one at a time. You want to make sure it's good and open. So you use that as your template. Right, and I want to show you a cute tool I've made. This is just using 18 gauge wire and I've hammered a little bit, about a quarter of an inch, half an inch from the edge. And I'm going to pick up my eyelet. This makes life so much easier. So I'm going to pick up the little eyelet. And if you'll notice, I chose, I have different lengths of eyelets, but knowing I'm just going to connect two pieces of metal together, it's really simple just to, or it's really good to use just the thinner piece. Oh, so you place it through all the layers that way. Right. And then you're able to push it through and line it up this way. Now this time on this, I did not catch my screen, but in one of these holes I will. I'll catch that screen. Okay. And then I'm going to come in, and once I have it all inserted, hold on, it takes a little bit of a finesse. Finesse. Yeah. And luck. And put it on your block. <laughs> and then I'm going to just insert it over on the block. Okay, well, let's take a look at the one that you finished because that one has been hammered. You're just going to tap the top of the hammer. Yeah, right? and I usually use an eyelet setter. So oh. I just put oh, it on I'm the sorry. top. Here, let's see you do it then. Oh, no, no problem. It's here, and then just very gently. And what's go. really nice is the eyelets are going to look the same, whether oh, yeah. you set them from the front or the back. It looks great. Yeah, but when yeah. you've got all that dimension, you want to come in from the okay. front. It makes it much better. Oh, yeah. And at the very top of the finished one there, did you roll it around the I did. I, actually, I just used a really nice pair of long needle nose pliers, and I just rolled it down. So you can um, kind of... So we can see here. Like that? Yep, exactly. There we go. And you can adjust that according to however you want. For your for thickness, you, for of, your your thickness of your necklace cord. Oh, great. And here's just another example of using, you know, a little component together and using it as a frame. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, we're almost out of time, but let's take a quick look at okay. these other necklaces. Right. They're so pretty. I love your work, Mary. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. We will be right back. Juliana Hudgens, and today we're talking about More is More. Welcome, Juliana. Hi, Katie. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for joining us. Yes. And you have a great idea for layering elements together. Let's take a look at your bracelet. Well, I love my bracelet. It's so fun and so empowering and just, you know, really cool to add to any outfit. Yes. So, you know, and, and pretty simple to create. 
Okay, well, what do you start with? Okay, well, what we're going to start with is I really like to take my traditional paper crafting supplies and translate those into jewelry. Right. So I'm working with some shapes. Yes, and you have this goddess shape, and but you could use any shape for you this that would work to create a cuff. Right, you just need to make sure that it's big enough to overlap. Okay. And you could see that right in front of us here. So I've cut that shape four times, and then what I do is I'm going to put those together and adhere them with some adhesive. Okay, so like so, industrial strength adhesive. Exactly, because this is pleather. All right. So we do need that. And then I'm going to take those two pieces, overlap them together, and this creates the base of our cuff. Right. So then the next thing that I want to do is to cut the copper. Okay. And I'm going to use my machine right here. Yes. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking the plate. You know, I wouldn't have thought you would cut. You could cut pleather and metal with your paper. I mean, this is really for paper crafting. It's so cool. You know, there really are several, many different materials that you can use with your shapes. Does it matter what gauge wire? The, the I'm sorry, metal. The thickness of the metal. That well, you use? I have been most successful with 40 gauge. Okay. But I have also played around with other gauges, and that's what you have to do when you're working with these yeah. types of shapes and machines and. And that's and the, the fun part, right? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so when I take this out, we are going to have, hello, where'd you go? <laughs> We're going to have these really fun shapes. Look at that, isn't that cool? Yes. All right, so and now the fun begins. All right. Because what we're going to do, and let me just put this to the side. We're coming over here, we have a bench block right here, nice metal. I'm going to take the oval shape, and then I'm going to take my hammer and create dents. Okay, great, so, so you're just texturing it. Yep, this is where I get that really cool hammered look. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I love dimension. Sure. So this is what's going to happen when it's all done. And then we're just going to adhere those pieces together. Same glue. Same glue. And then what I'm going to do is start to work with my 14 gauge wire. All right, and so this is gonna, this Heavy. is where more is more. It's just, <laughs> you just keep layering. You just keep layering. And what you're doing with these pieces is you're simply using your round nose pliers and I may give it a little turn there and then I'll come in and maybe we go this direction and there's really no rhyme or reason. You're just having fun and you're manipulating the wire and then what you're going to do is actually wrap those pieces with a thinner wire. So remember, the um, higher the number, the thinner. Yes. This is 22 gauge. I'm wrapping it around 14, which is much thicker and we're just creating like this little necklace look. So you have your squiggles and then you coil around them just to give them more dimension. Right, and so when you're complete, you know, when you're done with that, you're going to leave a little tail about mm -hmm. a half an inch or so long. You're going to take something sharp, like even a bead reamer, and poke a hole, and then okay. we just add that to the piece, and then we just start to further embellish it with our wire pieces, um, with some really cool bead charms down here that I created simply by using the thinner wire, 22 gauge, stringing it on. I've got some six millimeter and eight millimeter cracked quartz beads. Love those. I love those too. And you can bring in lots of yeah. color that way. Isn't love, that cool? Yes, and I like mixing beads together with wire and metal work. I do too. Yeah. I, I love mixing whatever's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just a lot of fun to utilize all of your different tools and products. And so, you know, nothing ever goes to waste with us. That's right. And then we're just creating this cute little drop right here. And so we have three of those. Okay, and I just want to point out too, one more time, that to attach these squiggles, you would poke a hole with a beading awl or a reamer or something. Yeah, or a thing T pen. And press that to the inside yep. before you glue it down. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, and then you can further embellish it yeah. with other crystals. Let's take a look at how you closed it, too. Is this a closure that you just attach with wire? Yeah, wrapping? and you know, you definitely have options. You can either create a hook and loop with the wire, or you could certainly use, you know, an attachment like. Um, a pre made clasp. Of exactly. Some kind. Something like that would be fine. So, you, whatever, you know, it lends itself to. Sure. And as you're building and creating, then you just keep putting more on there. Yes. And I, it, more it is looks more. Like you, yeah, it looks like you had fun in your studio with this one. I really had a lot of fun with this. And, you know, again, it's you can change the color combination, you can change the material that you cut right. to. Oh, which gives us a perfect chance to talk about <laughs> yeah. the cheetah or leopard. Yes, because print. this is amazing. This is felt. So again, I just took a decorative 
felt and I layered that on oh, top you of put each that other. Oh, you put machine too. Exactly. Wow, okay. And then also, you know, other materials like I have over there with the zebra print. And yeah. again, I'm just layering after, you know, layers after layer. I've actually incorporated some glitter in the other piece over there. It looks like you added a Velcro closure to the zebra one. I did. Very cool. And I, I love those wire coils. Oh, in more color and yeah. just coiling it up. Yes, that is one of my most favorite things to make. So that will really add a tremendous amount of dimension to your project. Oh, yeah. Now, do you hammer these at all? Um, I do. So, you know, I, I have flattened these pieces. So I could take this piece that we were just working on and actually flatten them so yeah. that they lay really nice and flat onto the project. And if I want to, I can use this end of the hammer to create that dent into the heavier wire. Right. And you're work hardening it too. I'm work hardening it. Yes. Some dimension. It's absolutely amazing what Tell happens in that process. Tell us about this great felty bag. Oh, isn't this fun? So again, a traditional shape that I would normally use in paper crafting mixed media type of work. And I cut it out of felt. All right. Really delicious 100% felt. <laughs> and layering and layering. Layering and layering. Well, these are great. Thank you so much, Juliana. You're so welcome, Katie. All right, and this week was all about layering and combining elements for more drama. Next week, we'll combine shapes for another style element. Learn another way to think like a designer next time on Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels. Instructions for today's projects, plus other ideas, techniques, and information are available on the web at beadsbobblesandjewels.com. Today's show is number 1703. If you enjoyed today's show and want to see more projects and great guests, you can order a DVD set of the entire Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels series 1700. All 13 episodes plus bonus content featuring soldering techniques with Kate Richborg and Spiral Herringbone with Gene Campbell, only available in this DVD set. Order at beadsbobblesandjewels.com for $29.99 plus shipping and handling. Don't miss a single episode and get these bonus projects. Beads, Bobbles, and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events, and online learning. Beadingdaily.com Beadalon a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com. Create your style with Swarovski Elements. EKSuccessBrands.com forward slash create your style with Swarovski Elements. Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com. Jewel School, a division of jewelry television. JTV.com slash Jewel School. TierraCast. Define your design with metal. TierraCast.com.